I get a lot of questions about this particular problem um, from students using the Ask My Instructor feature, which don't forget is over here on the right. Um, so I thought I would do one. Um, of course, the numbers will change for you when you do the problem, but the process will be the same. All right, so let's take a look. Um, the probability distribution of the random variable x represents the number of hits a baseball player obtained in a game for the 2004 baseball season. So, for example, 16.79% of the time he had zero hits, 33.47% of the time he had one hit, and so on. Of course, it could be a she, but she tends to be softball. So, the probability distribution was used along with the statistical software to simulate 25 repetitions of this experiment. The number of hits was recorded, and then again for 50. Um, approximate the mean and standard deviation of the random variable, compare your results, blah, blah, blah. All right. So the first thing they want us to do is compute the theoretical mean of the random variable. That's going to require us to do a table in Excel. So let me get Excel up here. And let me remind everybody um, that's listening that if you're one of my students, you definitely should be using Excel like this to do problems, um, not only in the homework, but um, in your tests. I mean, you can see what I do. What I do is I make it so that the, the window's a little bit smaller and that way you can still see the data so it makes it easy for you to type in and then you can also um, see the question excuse me see the question as well as the Excel spreadsheet so it's really a good idea to make your window smaller um, but fit it in here all right here's the table now we're going to need to use the technique um, that we need in the Excel assignments for this section as well as for section 3.3. Namely, we multiply the number x times its probability. Let me click up here and drag. There we go. Now we need the sum of this column, which is going to be 1, hopefully, otherwise it wouldn't be a probability distribution. And it's not. Did I type something wrong? 16792874 Nope, there it is. See? That's why you do it. You do it to check yourself. There it is. Alright, so there's the sum of that one. Now it's one. That should be good. A little bit off. Sometimes that'll happen, you know, like 1.0001, um, just because of the rounding thing, but they should set it up so the most part so that the probabilities add to one, because otherwise it's technically not a probability distribution. All right, right here. This sum right here, this is the mean. So let me highlight it, mean. Bold, and let me give it a color. Um, let's see, I think it's in the font. There it is, font. It'll be a little harder to see what you're doing up here. You can always maximize the window. Then you can see all the, the bells and whistles to the ribbon. This is the home ribbon. Um, I happen to do this enough that I kind of vaguely remember where it is. All right, so there's the mean. Let's try it and see if I'm right. 1.6252. 1.6252. Enter. Oop, it doesn't like me. I did that. What's the problem? Oops, did I type it wrong? No. Oh, three decimal places. I'm a moron. It says to three. All right, let me try it now. There it is. All right, well, that happens. Standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation is going to be the value x minus the mean squared times the probability. All right, that's the formula we're going to be using. So equals x, oops, parentheses, oops, x minus the mean. Give it dollar signs, right? Press F4. That way, the mean value never changes. Square it, caret 2, times the probability. Enter. Drag that down. Let's drag this sum across. Um, this is technically the variance. Um, then we need the standard deviation, which is going to be equal to the square root of that value. 1.175. Let's check it. Yay! Alright, that's the first portion's done. I'll have to wait for the next video for the next portion. See you then.